Hi there, it's Caroline here, back with another sewing related video. Today I wanted to share with you one of my favorite parts of uh, when I was working at a fabric store, which was talking to people about independent pattern companies. So I thought I'd do a video version of that for you today and do a deep dive into one of my favorite pattern companies, which is Decades of Style. And I thought Decades of Style was the perfect choice because this month is so vintage September, um, which is sort of an Instagram challenge, and Decades of Style is a vintage reproduction pattern company. So Decades of Style was started in 2005, and they focus on vintage reproduction patterns from the 1920s to the 1950s. Their older patterns pre-2017 have a size range of a bust measurement from 30 inches to 46 inches, and their new patterns post-2017 have a bust range of 32 inches to 52 inches, and they are drafted with a B cut up block and with a 5'7 height in mind. And they do have modern instructions and yardage requirements and cutting layouts and, and all that. So like I mentioned earlier, Decades of Style focuses on the 1920s to the 1950s, and um, it's all split up by decades on the website. And they have another line called Decades Every Day, which is still very much vintage inspired, but it's a little more casual and some are on the easier side to sew. And they offer both PDF and printed options for most of their patterns, although some of the older ones are only printed versions. The printed patterns range from $9.50 to $25, and the PDFs range from $12 to $19. I really love the designs and the style of the company overall. Decades of Style has a super elegant, refined uh, style with some a few playful options in there as well. A lot of the patterns have some really cool seaming details, um, really cool piecing and pleating, and just the details read very true to vintage uh, in my eye. I can tell that the designers really are passionate about vintage clothes because there's no like stereotypical poodle skirts or flapper dresses. It all feels extremely accurate. And um, based on your fabric choice, you can either go the super accurate vintage reproduction route, or you can make it super fun and modern, which is kind of my style. I'd have to say the one kind of downside of Decades of Style is the somewhat limited size range. Because they had a smaller size range pre-2017, a lot of the patterns are in the in the smaller size range um and even their new size range i mean it's only up to a 52 inch bust so i really hope that they expand their sizes in the future and um, i encourage them to do so i would also say that this is a great opportunity to envision the garment um in different fabric and sewn up because the illustrations are so uh, stylized, it can be a little bit hard to imagine. And um, a lot of the samples are a little different than my personal taste. So I get to imagine how these garments are gonna look in fabrics that I would choose, which are a little uh, less refined and um, elegant than usually what Decades of Style has going on in their samples. <laughs> I'm more of a rainbow, bold, hot pink, everything kind of person. So I have sewed a bunch of decades of style patterns um, and a lot of them multiple times. So I'll take you through all of the patterns that I've sewn before and um, give you a little rundown. That's a lot of patterns. I will say though that I have not tried their PDF patterns. Um, so if you have, let me know how they uh, are. So the first pattern I wanna take you through that I've sewn is from the Decades Everyday line, which is the more like casual vintage inspired patterns. Um, and it's the ESP dress. So the ESP dress goes from a 30 to 46 inch bust. So it is one of the older patterns. Um, it is $18 for printed version and $14 for the PDF. And I don't actually have a real pattern because I traced it from one of my friends. So. I basically put this together without instructions. Shh, it's fine. 
So the first one I made was out of a flannel shirting, um, really nice and soft and drapey and cozy. Um, this pattern features four bust darts at the front and then two darts in the back. And it's got a really cool raglan sleeve. I guess, yeah, sure, it's a raglan sleeve if it's woven, right? Sure, sort of raglan sleeve um, with a dart at the top of the sleeve to give it some shape. And then um, a really square neckline and a facing for the neckline. Zipper down the back, gathered skirt, and um, two side seam pockets. This is an example of a pattern that looks very different in two different fabrics, so very versatile. Um, the second one I made was out of this more structured linen that I'm wearing right now. Um, and it definitely, well, okay, here's the thing. I believe I sewed this dress prior to washing this. Uh, I, I, I didn't pre-wash the fabric. Um, so don't be like me because I do believe that uh, this shrunk slightly. Um, it's a little bit shorter than I think it was originally, uh, but it still fits and um, I feel like it's not too short. So don't be like me, pre-wash your fabric. Anyway, in the flannel dress, uh, it the pattern looked very like soft and um, it was a little more drapey, the fabric. Uh, and in this one's a little more structured, the sleeves kind of sit out more. Overall, I think the ESP dress is an awesome everyday dress. Um, it has a little more interest than just a standard like gathered weight, gathered skirt dress, um, but it still is simple and nice. Next up, we have the chore skirt, which is also from the Decades Everyday line. So this one, I think it's also an older pattern. It obviously has um, just waist measurements because it's a skirt. So the size range is 26 inches to 42 inches in the waist. It is $18 printed and 14 for the PDF. Because I wanted to use only one fabric and I didn't want a weird seam cutting off this big print uh, of my fabric, I just did it all in one taped the actually i think i traced this pattern maybe sure so yeah i just traced all the skirt pieces all as one uh, combining that bottom band the chore skirt is printed on i would say just like it feels like regular printer paper um except obviously big <laughs> and it's printed in color so each size line has a color which i uh, very much appreciate because sometimes those dashed lines just they all look the same. I quite like the construction of this skirt. It has a lot of really dramatic pleats in the back which gives it a really cool shape. Um, it has a pretty small waistband, um, like thin waistband. Uh, it has a side closure with a zipper and a bar and hook. Um, but that zipper doesn't get in the way of a pocket on that side. So there are two side seam pockets. I think because of my fabric choice, I just don't know how to style this skirt. Um, I don't have a lot of white or yellow or green. Um, so I just always end up putting it with pink gingham, apparently. I did try to style with black when I first made it, but I'm not sure. I'm not convinced. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. How do I style a white skirt? Next up is one of my favorites. Number 3008, 1930s Sweetheart Overalls. As you can see, I got this when I was working in the fabric store. So this is from the main line of Decades of Style. Um, so a little less casual, a little more truly vintage. This one is one of the older patterns as well. It has a 30 inch to a 46 inch bust. It is $20 printed and $16 for the PDF. For this one, I definitely did not fit into um, the hip size range. Let's see, the hips go up to 49 inches and I have 52 to 53 inch hips. Um, so I did have to adjust the pants portion of the overalls 
to fit my hips. Um, it was, it was actually okay. I ended up putting two darts on each back pants piece uh, to help distribute the amount that I had to <laughs> gather into the waistband or to match to the waistband. I will say with the older patterns, the instructions are a little bit more sparse. Um, so they're more on the like intermediate side uh, in terms of instructions, um, but they were still totally fine. I learned how to do lapped seams just based on this pattern. So uh, it's totally doable still. And this pattern has like regular tissue pattern paper um, as well as black and white printing. For this pattern, I used a quilting cotton to make the overalls. Um, which usually I don't use quilting cotton to make garments, but I think it turned out great. I like them. I think this is maybe one of the best uses for quilting cotton in, in garment making. Um, I think they turned out really cute. The bodice and the straps are lined, the pants are not, and they do have two pockets. Nope, I added the pockets myself. They do not have any pockets, but I did add two pockets on the side seams because pockets are life. And I feel like this pattern is just so fun. Like the shape with the sweetheart neckline and the cross straps in the back. So freaking cute. Next up, we have a fun one. Number 4008, 1940s rodeo gal shirt. This is also one of the older patterns, um, pre-2017. So it is a 30 inch to a 46 inch bust. It is $20 printed and $16 for the PDF. The instructions for this one I found to be quite thorough. Um, it's the most complicated decades of style uh, pattern that I've ever made, um, but I still found it manageable. And I did make this pattern twice, and one of these shirts I think was the best collar that I've ever done, so. That's cool. The pattern is printed on regular tissue paper in black and white. There is the embroidery motifs included. And um, I did make some templates to help iron the yoke pieces that are super curved and pointy. I did make two of these shirts uh, for my ex, so I don't have the physical shirts with me, but I do have some photos. They're both made from Japanese unicorn print uh, quilting cotton, so another good garment choice for quilting cotton. And then they both had contrast. Um, the gray fabric is a linen rayon, a yarn dyed linen rayon. And then the pink fabric on the other one, that's the contrast, is linen and cotton with a lurex uh, sparkly, shiny green in there as well. Super fun. I love this pattern. I traced it so that I could make one for myself, which I need to do immediately. Maybe maybe that will be my project for So Vintage September. Um, I think it, with the right fabric choice and um, the right trimmings, because you can have, uh, there's a piping option. It could be very Dolly Parton, which it's like, as soon as you make it pink, I love everything Western and country. Um, I <laughs> I owned a pink cowboy hat as a child and pink cowboy boots. I'm here for it. So I need to make one for myself. It's going on the list. Next up, we have the Ophelia overalls, which is another one from the Decades Everyday line. And um, I think this might be their newest release in the Decades Everyday line. Um, and I got this one as an advanced copy for my work at the fabric store, so uh, that's why it doesn't look nearly as pretty as the other ones. Um, there's a really cute illustration for the Ophelia overalls. And this pattern, not sure if it's because this is an advanced copy or not, but it has tissue paper that's like somewhere in between regular paper um, and like pattern really tissue tissue paper, which I really like. I like the like mid-weight um, and it is printed in color, which this is their newest, uh, a newer pattern. So it comes in a 32 to a 52 inch bust. It is $20 printed and 16 for the PDF. Now this pattern 
um, has about four inches of ease built into it. So I did some weirdness because I decided that I wanted to have wanted it to have a more fitted look. I believe in the real packaging, the finished measurements, the finished garment measurements are on the packaging, which is very useful if you'd want to do something like me and um, make a non-fitted thing fitted. <laughs> so I have a 40 inch waist and a 52 to 53 inch hip. Based on the body measurements uh, that are recommended for the pattern, I would have to cut out a size 20 in my waist and a size 24 in my hips. But if we look at the finished garment measurements, a size 20 it has a 49 inch waist. Oh wow, that's a lot of ease. <laughs> and a size 24 has 58 inch hips. So of course that's going to create a more loose garment. Um, so I decided to look at the finished garment measurements and choose my sizes based on those. So I decided to cut out a 14 in the waist, which is 43 inches finished. You do want to have a couple of inches of ease. You don't want it to be skin tight because that's not very comfortable, especially for sitting, things like that. And then for the hips, I cut out a size 20, which is a finished garment measurement of 54 inches. I think I could have gone a little bit bigger on the hips, but I still like the way that it turned out and is quite comfortable. I sewed mine out of a printed corduroy, super cute pomegranate print corduroy. Um, <laughs> this is one where uh, I did not iron the fabric before I cut it out. Uh, I Things you do when uh, you live in a tiny apartment and don't have space to do anything properly. <laughs> so um, I do feel they're a bit wonky because there is uh, princess seams or um, yeah, I guess princess seams on the legs, but I still uh, wear these a lot. So these overalls are like 1940s land girl-esque inspired. Um, there's a pocket at the front. There's huge side pockets. There's a bunch of top stitching. So that gives it a really um, professional look, especially if you're using like denim or, or something like that. It is two buttons that close the, the straps. Um, the one thing, well, there are two things I would change if I were to make these again, which they're really cute, I probably should, <laughs> is uh, I would lengthen the straps. Um, I think I have a bit of a long torso, so they're just a smidge too short. And I also lengthen the hem um, because my legs are also slightly long, so <laughs> they're just a tad short on me. The sides of the overalls, uh, they suggest that you use snaps on the side openings, which I definitely see why. Um, I chose to use buttons um, because I thought they would look cool, which they do. I really like the look of the buttons. Um, however, it does mean that I have to do undo one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten buttons to uh, use the restroom. Yeah, it takes me probably a full minute to <laughs> undo all of the buttons. So I see why they want you to use snaps, but the buttons look so cute. The Ophelia overalls are, again, one of the more complicated patterns. But, uh, I, you know, I would say they're intermediate. The instructions are quite clear. Looking through all of these patterns that I've already made makes me want to make them all again in different fabrics and different trimmings and such. I did want to shout out a couple other patterns that I think are super cute and I would love to make um, from Decades of Style. There's a number 3001, 1930s kitchenette pajamas. I think this like jumpsuit situation is so cute. Um, I love the tie closure. The pockets look very tiny, but you know, you could change that. Um, and uh, I don't know, it just, it looks comfy. It looks, yeah, pajama-ish. 
lovely. Also, I think their most recent release was number 3016, 1930s Miss L's coat dress. Super cute. Um, this is definitely one of the like classy 30s lady um, refined taste. Uh, and it has really cool decoration on the sleeves. Um, beautiful. They've been releasing some good stuff lately, okay? This might, number 3017 1930s corsage dress, also adorable. Um, this one has some like flower, fabric flower uh, details, decoration, contrasting collar and cuffs, big sleeves, pleats, pleats on the skirt, adorable. Like, do I need a whole 1930s wardrobe? Maybe. I think the 30s are definitely one of my favorites. Although 40s, number 4003, 1940s siren sundress. So cute. It's got like a wrap, strap, back detail. I feel like this would be really cute depending on the fabric choice, or you can make it sort of fancy cocktail dress-ish. And then let's look at their 20s. 20s is a hard one for me. Um, <laughs> I feel like the loose A-line dress on a, you know, big hips, smaller shoulders, uh, body type, if you will. I don't know, it's just not my favorite. But can we talk about this cloud cape? Number 2701, 1927 Cloud Cape. Uh, yes, please. Look at all of the ruching. Wow. In velvet, it looks amazing. Uh, take me to Middle Earth. I will join the fellowship if I can get this cape because uh, that's the vibes I'm getting. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope you got some vintage clothes inspiration, uh, maybe for So Vintage September. Um, I know I have uh, about 5 million things I want to sew now. Thank you for joining me and happy sewing. Mm -hmm.